Africa is one of the world's biggest and wealthiest continents. Today, Africa shines brighter than ever before globally, and the legacy of history's greatest African rulers is never far away. Although sometimes dismissed as merely the dark continent, Africa has a rich history full of skillful and impressive rulers. I am featuring rulers in the sense of monarchs, which is why Hannibal and President Nelson Mandela are not included. Moreover, this list concerns African rulers of great influence not just politically and militarily, but also on popular culture. By calling them the top greatest rulers, it does not necessarily imply these were good people, but rather people who had a great, as in tremendous, even if in some cases terrible, influence on history and they are 18. Nzingam Vemba, Nzingam Vemba, the kingdom of Congo's greatest ruler, was the kingdom's second Christian king. He is known as the Apostle of the Congo and is one of the most influential African rulers in Central African history. He supported the Pope's obedience to Christianity and opposed paganism and ancestral faiths, although he opposed the Portuguese colonists' enslavement practices. He is famous for his actions against the slave trade. 17. Askia Muhammad I. Askia is one of only a handful of African rulers known as the Great. He reigned over Songhai as its emperor during its height of power and supported scholars working in Timbuktu. Songhai flourished as the political, military, and culture superstate in Western Africa during his reign, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Niger River. His tomb is currently a World Heritage Site and books produced by his scholars are critical resources for historians of medieval Africa. This African monarch of Songhai is credited for establishing a high-quality governance structure that is still recognized for its effectiveness today. Indeed, he builds a system where he divides the land into provinces and appoints a governor to each of them, overseen by a competent and dependable judicial system. He is well known for his attributes. 16. Bihanzen Hasu Bawel Bihanzen Hasu Bawel is said to have been the 19th century's final ruler of West Africa. This African monarch battled valiantly for Dahomas, now Benin, independence from the colonialists. His heroic nicknames King Shark and Egg of the World came from persistence and bravery, he did not hesitate to oppose French colonists' imperialist aspirations to impose their African traditions. This African monarch reminds us that we must not surrender to imperialism and must continue to struggle for our nation's freedom and independence, particularly in the face of everyday racism and prejudice. 15. Sundiata Keita Sundiata Keita's name is legendary in West Africa, and with good reason, the monarch declared Munsa, which means King of Kings, as the foundation of Mali's mighty empire. It has a past that is worthy of today's success tales. A little prince, born to an unattractive lady and crippled until he was seven years old, grew up to become one of Africa's most revered and well-known rulers. He understood how to be a superb administrator and performer in commercial, cultural, and exploitative growth. His name means Lion Prince. Sundiata founded the ancient Mali Empire and reigned between 1235 to 1255 CE. His territory constituted Gambia, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, and Senegal, all of which he had conquered. This ancient African king is known as the Prince of the Mandinka people. He laid the foundation for a powerful and wealthy empire. Under Keita's leadership, Mali created the first oral charter for human rights, the Mandan Charter. The charter contains, among other things, the abolition of slavery, education, and food security. 14. Seymori Touré Seymori Touré is regarded as West Africa's unifier. After gaining the freedom of his kidnapped mother, this monarch becomes enslaved and works in the Baitike's army for a few years, so naturally, when he returns to his homeland, he becomes Sudan's king. One of his biggest achievements was terrifying the French by repelling their forces, who had come to take Africa's kingdoms. This status won him the respect and admiration of Africans, who would remember him as the African monarch who fought colonialism and European forces with tenacity. 13. Taharka, his name means, young man, or, young warrior, and is also known as Taraka. 
This Nubian king was the last ruler of the 25th dynasty in Egypt, reigning from 690 to 664 BCE. Taharqa united the kingdoms of Egypt and Nubia, forming the largest African empire at the time. This ruler brought a new peace and stability to the land, revived the arts, and several building projects. Bible scholars believe that Taharqa is mentioned in the Bible, in 2 Kings 19 verse 9, and Isaiah 37 verse 9 as the Cushite king of Egypt who waged war against Sennacherib, king of Assyria. 12. Oba Odujua of the Oyo Empire This African king was the ruler of the Oyo Empire in 700 AD. In the Yoruba culture, he is recognized as a primordial god. He came from the lower Nigerian region and conquered many existing settlements to develop Yoruba land. Odujua had 16 children. Before his death, he sent each one of them to his conquered territories to rule them autonomously. This led to the founding of the Isla, Oregon, Owu, Kedu, Sabe, Popo, and Oyo kingdoms, which constituted the Yoruba dynastic family line. 11. Shaka Zulu Shaka is a powerful and influential South African monarch. This military commander successfully turned his Zulu warriors into outstanding fighters and established his country as one of Africa's most well-known. African king names were inspired by their tribes of origin, their ancestors, or stories surrounding their birth. For instance, Shaka Zulu was originally known as Sigidi. The name Shaka is believed to have stemmed from his father's claim that Nandi, his mother was not pregnant but was suffering from an intestinal condition caused by the Shaka beetle. Shaka is the founder of the famous Zulu Empire in South Africa. He is known to have used dictatorial means to unite the Zulu tribes. He is also famed for having created a powerful military force out of these tribes. Shaka's troops used standardized weaponry to fight their foes. Among the weapons he developed was a short stabbing spear. During his brutal reign, Zulu's troops killed a total of two million enemies. Shaka Zulu is without any doubt the most recognizable native-born kind from South Africa. His efforts to unify the Zulu kingdom mark him as one of the greatest Zulu kings. He is widely recognized as participating in a military revolution of sorts with regards to weapons and tactics used by Zulu warriors, particularly their effective use of special spears and shields during combat. His legacy is such that he appears as a playable character in video games and as the subject of an epic TV series. Moreover, he is considered by Spike TV as one of history's deadliest warriors. 10. King Sunni Ali Br. Ali founded the Songhai Empire and reigned between the 15th and 16th centuries. During his reign, the Songhai Kingdom thrived and surpassed the Mali Empire by absorbing its territories, including Timbuktu. Sunni also had a strong military force and used amphibious operations that would patrol and attack through the Niger River. Sunni was one of the black kings in Africa who facilitated the spread of Islam since he was a member of the Sunni Muslim dynasty. The religion spread widely across urban and rural centers during his reign, making the Songhai Empire become the largest Muslim West African empire of all time. 9. Mansa Musa, another Mali king is regarded as one of Africa's greatest rulers. This charming monarch drew a lot of attention. He was an excellent academic, economist, art enthusiast, and scholar. Mansa Musa was king of the Mali kingdom between A.D. 1306 and 1332 AD. His real name is Musa Keita, but he adopted Mansa, which means, King of Kings, or Emperor. He was the tenth emperor of this kingdom. This ancient ruler is famed for traveling to Mecca alongside 72,000 residents for a holy pilgrimage. His leadership led the Mali kingdom to become one of the wealthiest empires in the world. This was fueled mainly by the production of gold, salt, agriculture and dynamic trade. Mansa Musa is also recognized as the richest man of all time. He was a prolific military leader and was lavish in his spending. The king captured several cities, which extended his territory to modern-day Mauritania, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, 
and Chad. He was at the genesis of Mali's apogee, which was regarded as one of the greatest countries of the time, and was considered one of the wealthiest individuals of all time. If one thing should be remembered about his rule, it is the massive procession of over 70,000 men that he led from Timbuktu to Mecca to complete the holy pilgrimage. This incident won him a great deal of respect, which he still enjoys today. 8. Nefertiti Nefertiti and her husband Pharaoh Akhenaten are among the most notable pharaohs of ancient Egypt. She is one of the few pharaohs to feature as one of the popular history teacher's songs used by various instructors, especially in North American schools and appears frequently on jewelry and even currency. Her and her husband's historic claim to fame, however, concerns a religious revolution that they undertook in which they emphasized monotheistic worship of the sun disk, Aden. She may have even ruled in her own right as Neferneferiaden after her husband's death and before the rise of Tutankhamun, probably Egypt's most famous pharaoh, but whose historic significance stems from rejecting Akhenaten and Nefertiti's monotheism in favor of a restoration of polytheism. 7. Ramesses II the Great Ramesses is one of the few African-born rulers known as the Great. He reigned as Egypt's pharaoh from 1279 to 1213 BC. During his time on the throne, he fought the epic Battle of Kadesh, circa 1274, against the Hittite Empire. Although both sides claimed victory, the battle is well known from Ramesses's account of his campaign. In addition to his military fame, Ramesses also undertook major building programs, particularly at Abu Simbel, in addition to the creation of a colossal statue of him. 6. Cleopatra VII Thea Philopater the Great Cleopatra is the most notable African ruler to be named the Great and a major aspect of modern popular culture. Her life has been depicted in many plays and films produced in Europe and America despite her being an Egyptian pharaoh. Unlike the other women on this list, her descent comes from the Greco-Macedonian armies of Alexander the Great that captured Egypt from the Persian Empire nearly three centuries before her life. Her personality and ambition are legendary. She reportedly was introduced to Julius Caesar by being unrolled from a rug. She so captivated him that they had a son nicknamed Little Caesar. After Julius's assassination, she allied with Mark Antony and appeared on coins as a goddess, Thea, while referring to herself as Nea Isis, thereby suggested she was the resurrected form of the goddess Isis. Anticipating al Gaddafi's megalomania by a couple thousand years, she styled herself as Queen of Kings and her son as King of Kings, but unlike al Gaddafi, Cleopatra had a much more realistic chance of making this lofty claim a reality. Had hers and Antony's forces defeated their rival Octavian at Actium, 31 BC, the history of the entire Mediterranean may have been altered fundamentally with Alexandria, rather than Rome being the great superpower of antiquity. Yet, even though she ultimately failed and her death meant the end of the Egypt of the pharaohs, her intelligence and cunning in a male-dominated world remain admirable. It is not surprising you can buy Cleopatra action figures. 5. King Phasalides, a powerful emperor of the Solomonic dynasty who ruled in the 17th century, Phasalides took the throne name, Alam Sagad, meaning, he to whom the world bows, who ended a period of contact between his country and Europe. Initiating a policy of isolation that lasted for more than two centuries. Phasalide succeeded to the throne on the abdication of Susenios, 1632, who had permitted an increase of Spanish and Roman Catholic influence in Ethiopia. Phasalides re-established a close alliance between the Ethiopian Coptic Christian Church and the ruling house, expelled Catholic missionaries, and enlisted the aid of the Muslim rulers of the coastal states to bar all Europeans from the country. He restored its official status as the state religion and legitimated its status by rekindling connections with the high priests of the Coptic Church in Alexandria, Egypt, Catholics and Jesuits didn't fare as well under Fazl's rule, he burned Catholic writings and banished missionaries of both sects. Fazlides is best known, however, for his grand buildings and public works projects, he established Gondar in 1635, made it Ethiopia's new capital city, and built the palace complex that became the royal enclosure, 
Fazl Gebi in order to protect the throne from the danger of invasions by the Gala peoples of the south. Fazilide started many of the 44 churches that would later make Gondar famous and built seven stone bridges in Ethiopia, including two that span the Blue Nile. Fazil's other marks include his withdrawal from diplomatic relations with European powers but his creation an embassy in the Mughal Empire of India and his infamous imprisonment of his son Dawit on a mountaintop after the young upstart rebelled against his father and tried to usurp the throne. 4. Queen Makeda or Queen of Sheba The story of the Queen of Sheba appears in religious texts sacred to Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Described in the Bible as simply a Queen of the East, Modern scholars believe she came from the kingdom of Aksum in Ethiopia, the kingdom of Saba in Yemen, or both. Their main clue is that she brought bales of incense with her as a gift, frankincense only grows in these two areas. Both countries claim her as theirs. Given that they are separated by only 25 kilometers of water, both could be right, in these tales the Queen of Sheba is a seeker of truth and wisdom and she has heard that King Solomon of Israel is a very wise man. She travels on camel to Jerusalem to meet him and test his knowledge with questions and riddles. With her she brings frankincense, myrrh, gold and precious jewels, King Solomon has heard of Sheba and her great kingdom. The Queen of Sheba tests Solomon's wisdom, asking him many questions and giving him riddles to solve. He answers to her satisfaction and then he teaches her about his god Yahweh and she becomes a follower. The queen agrees to stay with King Solomon as a guest. An unmarried woman, she warns the king not to touch her. He replies that in exchange she should not take anything of his. He has tricked her, however. In the middle of her first night she is thirsty and she takes a glass of water. He confronts her and tells her that by breaking her agreement she has released him from his. They spend the night together and when she returns home from his kingdom, she is pregnant with a son, she raises her son Menelik on her own. When he grows up, Menelik decides that he wants to meet his father and travels to Israel to meet King Solomon. When he returns, he takes with him the Ark of the Covenant, the sacred container that contained the Ten Commandments. In Ethiopian legend, the Ark has remained in Ethiopia ever since and Ethiopians see Menelik as the first in an unbroken line of Ethiopian kings that stretches into the 20th century. 3. King Izana and King Sezana King Izana and King Sezana ruled the kingdom of Aksum, which is modern-day Ethiopia. They are celebrated as the first Ethiopian kings to embrace Christianity and convert his entire kingdom. They were very instrumental in establishing the Ethiopian church. Izana and Sezana are also famed for ending the powerful rival kingdom of Mero. They foresaw the building of several unique structures and obelisks, tall, pyramid-like monuments. This kings also increased international trade, making the land of Aksum prosper. His coins have been discovered in India and Greece. There is another video called The World's Only Twin Kings Who Reign Together on the Same Throne and you can see the story better on that video. 2. King Lalabella, Lalabella, regnal name Givremeskel, was a king of the Zagwi dynasty, reigning from 1181 to 1221. He was the son of Jan Siam and brother of Kedis Harb. Perhaps the best known Zagwi monarch, he is credited as the patron of the namesake monolithic rock hewn churches of Lalabella. He is venerated as a saint by the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church on June 19. King Lalabella was born in Bugna in 1162, at a town called either Adefa or Roa, it was later renamed Lalabella after him. A swarm of bees was said to have surrounded him at his birth, which his mother took as a sign of his future reign as Emperor of Ethiopia. Accordingly he was named Lalabella, meaning, the bees recognize his sovereignty, in Old Aga. Tradition states that he went into exile due to the hostility of his uncle Tatadim and his brother King Kedis Harb, and was almost poisoned to death by his half-sister, Rise to Power, because Lalabella came to power during his brother's lifetime, to death Tumrit suspects that he took the crown by force of arms. Construction of Churches Lalabella is said to have seen Jerusalem and then attempted to build a new Jerusalem as his capital in response to the capture of Old Jerusalem by Muslims in 1187. As such, 
Many features of the town of Lalabella have biblical names including the town's river, known as the River Jordan. The city remained the capital of Ethiopia from the late 12th century and into the 13th century, details about the construction of his 11 monolithic churches at Lalabella have been lost. According to the narrative of the Portuguese embassy to Ethiopia in 1520-6, written down by Father Francisco Alvarez and published in 1540, the Lalabelian priests claimed that the churches took 24 years to construct. They said that King Lalabella ordered this to be done. His chief queen was Maskal Kibra, about whom a few traditions have survived. She induced Abuna Michael to make her brother Hiran bishop, and a few years later the Abuna left Ethiopia for Egypt, complaining that Hiran had usurped his authority. Tedes Tumrit suspects that the end of Lalabella's rule was not actually this amiable, and argues that this tradition masks a brief usurpation of Na Quito Lab, whose reign was ended by Lalabella's son, Yetbarak. An embassy from the Patriarch of Alexandria visited Lalabella's court around 1210, and have left an account of him, and Na Quito Lab and Yetbarak. The Italian scholar Carlo Conti Rossini has also edited and published the several land grants that survive from his reign. 1. King of Kings Emperor Menelik II, Menelik II, original name Salamarium, one of Ethiopia's greatest rulers, he expanded the empire almost to its present-day borders, repelled an Italian invasion in the Battle of Adwa in 1896, and carried out a wide-ranging program of modernization. Early life, Menelik's father was Haile Malakot, later Negus, king, of Shua. His mother was a court servant who married Haile Malakot shortly after Salamarium was born. His forefathers had been rulers of Mens, the heartland of Shua, since the 17th century, and it has been claimed that further back they were related to the Solomonid line of emperors who ruled Ethiopia between 1268 and 1854, alternate dates 1270 to 1855. Early in the subsequent campaigns, Haile Malakot died, and Salamarium was captured and taken to the emperor's mountain stronghold, Amba Magdila. In nearly ten years of captivity, he had opportunity to observe Tuadroza's dedication to the unification and modernization of the empire and also the heavy-handed and often violent methods that ultimately led to the emperor's failure and suicide. Salamarium contrived to escape from Magdila in 1865 and returned to Shua which had remained in a state of sporadic unrest and revolt against Tuadros. Although only 21 years of age, he was able to displace Baziba, who had been appointed ruler by the emperor in 1859, and subsequently declared himself Negus of the province. Salamarium stood six feet tall and had a dark complexion and fine white teeth, but smallpox had left its marks on his face. As a diplomat, he made a great impression on the foreign emissaries who visited his court. With their help, he imported firearms, the better to equip his armies and the garrisons and settlers that came in their wake. On the death of Tuadros in 1868, Salamarium, as Negus of Shua, aspired to the position of emperor, but he was not the only claimant. He had to submit first to Tekel Georgis, 1868-72, and Johannes IV, 1872-89. Before Johannes died fighting the Sudanese in 1889, he obliged Salamarium to direct his ambitions mainly to the south and east. Salamarium subsequently incorporated Arusi, Harar, Harar, Jima, Kafa, Kafa, and the several kingdoms and states of southern Ethiopia within his domains. By the time of Johannes's death, Salamarium had emerged as the strongest man in Ethiopia and was able to assume the imperial crown for which he had waited so long. During the period of his rivalry with Emperor Johannes IV and the latter's son, Mengesha, Menelik appeared to befriend the Italians, but a quarrel later developed. The Italians interpreted Article 17 of the Treaty of Wichal, Uxiali, concluded in 1889 by the Italians and Menelik, as giving Italy a protectorate over Ethiopia. It is quite inconceivable that Menelik would have agreed to his historic country becoming a protectorate. When he learned of the Italian interpretation, which was gaining some acceptance in Europe, he at once denied it and in 1893 renounced the whole treaty, defeat of Italy at Adwa, the Italians had established themselves along the Red Sea coast, and the governor of the Italian colony of Eritrea. 
after much intrigue and several minor military skirmishes, risked a major confrontation. The Italian army was defeated by the Ethiopians in one of the greatest battles in the history of Africa, the Battle of Adwa, on March 1, 1896. A settlement after the battle cancelled the Treaty of Wichal and acknowledged the full sovereignty and independence of Ethiopia, but the Italians were allowed to retain Eritrea. After Adwa, Menelik's Ethiopia was at once accepted by the European powers as a real political force. The crushing defeat of a European army greatly enhanced Menelik's international reputation, causing a host of foreign advisors, ambassadors, emissaries, and adventurers to flow into the country. Menelik's later activities as emperor included the creation of ministries, the initiation of modern education, and the construction of telephone and telegraph systems and of a railway from Djibouti. On the Gulf of Aden, to Addis Ababa, the emperor's new capital in the highlands of Shua. Beginning in 1906 or 1907, Menelik suffered a series of paralytic strokes, and power passed to his wife, Empress Taidu, to Ras Tezema, who became regent, and to Lij Ayasu, the grandson who was to succeed him. The stricken emperor finally died in 1913.